Okay, so in the previous segment, we spoke about the fact that you should always try to use box sizing border box as your box sizing model. Now, of course, you don't want to specify box sizing border box on every element in your entire HTML. So you definitely want to specify it once and then have it um, be inherited everywhere. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Let's remove this border box from here. And body seems to be like a natural place to put it since body is the top level element and it should inherit everywhere else. So if I uh, place the box sizing border box here and then I refresh, this should stay the same. Oop, it didn't work. Now why didn't that work? It jumped back to the content box. Well, the reason that didn't work is because box sizing is one of those CSS properties that is not inherited. You can't set it on its parent on the parent element and then expect that the child elements will inherit that property. So how do we get around that? Well, the way we get around it is by learning about one more selector. And that selector is the star selector. Let's go back up here and we'll go ahead and say star and then we'll cut and paste that border box property right here. Now, what is this star? Well, first of all, let's refresh to see if it worked. And sure enough, now it's working. What star does, star selector says is, go ahead and select every element there is and apply these particular CSS properties to them. The difference between star and placing it, placing some property in a parent element, for example, is that star says, I am not asking you to inherit anything. I'm saying select every element, which means it's as if it took this, uh, this property and this value, and then it went to the HTML and then applied it to every element it saw, it applied that particular property and value, which in this case is box sizing border box. So that's how properties like box sizing are applied across your entire page. Now I told you that border box is a property that's new in CSS3. Whenever you hear something like that, an alarm bell should go off. Does every browser that I deal with support border box? Well, we know just the resource to check that out, and we'll go to the website called caniuse.com and we'll type in border box. Border box is a CSS3 box sizing property. And if we take a look, excellent. Every single browser is green. So every single browser fully supports this property value. Okay, so next let's close this up and let's try to advance our margin understanding a little bit better. Okay, so let's take a look at this diagram. We have two boxes next to each other. In other words, two elements. And the gray part is the margins. Well, margins that are left and right are cumulative. So if I have a margin, right margin of 40 pixels on the left box and a left margin of 50 pixels on the right box, the cumulative margin will be 90 pixels, 40 plus 50. And that's pretty simple and this is exactly what you would expect. But what happens if you have one element on top of the other element, which is let's say these are two divs, and each one is specifying a margin. So one is specifying margin of 30, margin top for the bottom uh, for the bottom element, margin top is 30, and for the top element, margin bottom is 20. Would you expect this to be 50 pixels, the cumulative? Well, the answer is it won't be. The answer is the margins collapse and the larger margin wins. So the actual distance between the border of one element and the border of another element will be, in this case, 30 pixels, meaning the larger margin will win and the other one will just collapse. Let's take a look at an example inside our code editor. Okay, so going back to the same file, box model before.html, we can take a look and see that we have uh, h1 here and we defined a margin bottom of 30 pixels on h1. Let's go ahead and, and go to our box and we actually remove the margin altogether and refresh. And we'll take a look what it is without the margin. So you can see there's just some margin going on here. And that margin is coming from this H1 here, margin bottom. Let's go ahead and define a margin top. So we need a margin bottom is on H1 here. And we need a margin top on our box. So let's define a margin top of 20 pixels. And when we do that, when we refresh, absolutely nothing will happen. And the reason that is, is because the box is defining a 20 pixel margin, yet the H1 is already defining a 30 pixels margin. So when they come together and touch, they collapse into whatever the larger margin is. So in this case, that's 30. However, if I made the margin to be 40, let's say even 50 pixels, now you'll see that the box will move down because now 
the box has a larger margin uh, than the one specify, specified on H1. So there is now a bigger distance between the box model H1 and the actual box, and it's actually 50 pixels. We can also notice, by the way, that the box model, the words box model, are not flush at the top with the corner of the browser. Now, why is that? Let's go and investigate. Let's go ahead and inspect the element. Let's take a look. It's got a margin of 21.4 something. And where is this margin coming from? Well, it's coming from, again, the user agent style sheet. And the reason it's coming here is because of some browser-specific prefixes that we actually haven't talked about that are defining the margin before and margin after. We're not going to delve too much into this, but the bottom line, it means before the element and after the element, they'll define some margin. Now, the reason our margin uh, on the body that we specified, margin zero, is not working here is very simple. Body says anything that is below me and inside of me, right, is going to have the margin inherited. But that's only if you don't override it specifically for that element. As you see here, user agent style sheet has a selector H1 that is specifically overriding the margin, which therefore wins. And this is a bit of a side point, but how do we override this? Well, now that we know about the star selector, it's easy. You could just say and move the padding and the margin to the star selector. And now what this basically saying is that I am selecting every element specifically and I'm, then I'm overriding its margin. So if I refresh uh, the page now, you could see now it's flushed together to the top. We won't necessarily be doing this in our pages left and right, but at least now you know that if you wanted to reset, and it's called CSS resetting, if you wanted to reset the CSS browser defaults, you would do this most of the time using the star selector.